Okay, this is 4.7, orders of operations with fractions. So here we're going to be dealing with powers. So we're having some a to some m power. And basically what that becomes is we're going to take a times a times a times a and so on m times. So we're going to have, you know, however many m is, we're going to have that many a's multiplied together. And so since we're dealing with fractions, what that's going to show us is we're going to have the following. We're going to have, if I can get down here and get, this pen. All right, so we're going to end up with, say we have a minus four fifths, and say we want to square that. Well, if we follow that, that just means we're going to take a minus four over five times a minus four over five, and when you take a minus times a minus, we have a plus, so now we just take four times four, we get 16, and five times five, we get 25, and that's how you would square it. Now, let's say we had a, a minus 1 over 3. Well, that's, and let's raise it to the third power. That's just going to be a minus 1 over 3 times a minus 1 over 3 times a minus 1 over 3, and that's going to be positive if those two, but then we still have that last negative, so it's going to be a negative. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. And so that's what our answer would be for this. And so that's how we're going to get our number um, of, of fractions multiplied together. Again, we're just going to have to remember the following. An odd number of negatives gives a negative answer, and an even number of negatives gives a positive answer. So here we had an even number, we have a positive answer. We had an odd number, we had a negative answer. And PEMDAS, it's going to work just like before, uh, except now we're going to have fractions instead of just numbers, but we're going to do the same kind of things. We have to follow the order of operations. So say we had something like uh, negative 2 over 3 plus 3 over 4 times negative 1 over 2, okay? So we have an addition, we have a multiplication. So, you know, multiplication comes before addition. So we're gonna first take and multiply these two together. So we'll keep our negative two thirds out front. We're gonna to add to that. Well, three times a negative one is gonna be, let's put this in parentheses, a negative three. And four times two is eight. And so now we have a negative two thirds plus a negative three eighths. So to add fractions, we have to find our LCD. So we have a 3 and an 8. Well, those won't break down any further, so our LCD is 24. So we're going to take a negative 2 thirds times 8 over 8, and we're going to take a negative 3 over 8 times a 3 over 3. And so then that simplifies into here we have a negative 2 times 8, so that's going to be a negative 16 over 24. And then here we have 3 times 3, that's 9, it's negative, so we're going to have basically plus a negative 9 over 24. All right, so now what do we have? Well, we have a negative 16 plus a negative 9. Well, that's going to be a negative 25 over 24. Now, uh, these are going to be special. You're going to have to look and see what the directions say on, your, on the assignment. Sometimes they'll say leave it as improper fraction, which is what we have here. Sometimes they'll say make it a mixed number. And so then what we'd have to do is say, well, that's a negative 1 and 1 24th. So it all depends on uh, what the directions say to do. If it says you can leave it as the improper fraction, do that because that's easiest. If not, go ahead and uh, change it to a mixed number and you, you can do that as well. All right. Um, so uh, let's look at uh, another one. Let's say we have instead um, a plus b times c and let's say they give us that a is equal to a negative one fourth, b is equal to a one fifth, and c is equal to a negative one third, okay? So what we have to do is we have to plug in these values into this expression. So a is gonna be a negative one fourth plus b, which is one fifth, times c, which is a negative one third, okay? Well, we'll leave our uh, one fourth, negative one fourth out front. We can do our product next, so it's a negative one fourth plus, here we have a one times negative one, so it's going to be a negative one. Five times three 
that's 15. Okay, now we have to find LCD. Well, the LCD is really just going to be 4 times 15, and so that's going to give us 60. So converting that, we have a negative 1 over 4 times 15 over 15 plus negative 1 over 15 times 4 over 4. So now we have a negative 1 times 15, so it's going to be a negative 15 over 60 plus. Here we have a negative 1 times 4, it's going to be a negative 4 over 60. So we have a negative 15 plus a negative 4, so it's going to be a negative 19 over 60. Now this can't be reduced, and so therefore that's going to be our final answer. All right, um, we're going to have complex fractions. Uh, these are going to be things where you have a numerator and a denominator of a fraction that's going to contain fractions themselves. And so uh, I'll, I'll write one out here in a little bit. And so one way to solve these is uh, the fractional expression way. Basically, if there's fractions present in the numerator and fractions in the denominator, first you simplify what the numerator is, then you simplify the denominator, and then after that you'll have a fraction over a fraction, and then you just divide those and get your answer. And so what we're going to do is go through one of those right now, and then we'll look at another way after that. So let's first take and uh, say we have one-fourth minus one-third divided by, I don't know, let's say one-fourth plus one-third, okay? So this is what we mean by fractions in the numerator and fractions in the denominator. And so we have addition and subtraction, you know, and respectively, the denominator is addition, the numerator is subtraction. And so what we need to do is we need to simplify. Well, here LCD is going to be 12. Here the LCD is also going to be 12. So what we're going to have to do is take 1 over 4 times 3 over 3 minus our 1 third times 4 over 4. Now the denominator is going to work the same way, it has the same LCD, so now we're going to have 1 over 4 times 3 over 3 plus 1 over 3 times 4 over 4. Now we simplify, so that becomes 3 over 12 when we multiply that fraction. Minus here we have 4 over 12. And on the bottom we have 3 over 12 plus 4 over 12. So if we take 3 minus 4, that's going to give us a minus 1 over 12 in a numerator. And if we take 3 plus 4, that's going to give us 7 over 12 in a denominator. So that's what we get to when we say simplify the numerator and the denominator separately. Now we just divide. So when we divide, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm going to say a negative 1 over 12. I'm going to say divided by 7 over 12. That way, when I do this, I can say, oh, well, that I have to keep the first fraction the same, change it to multiply, take the reciprocal of the second fraction, and then I can multiply across. Or if I notice, that 12 will go in here once, and it'll go in here once, and so now I just have a negative 1 times that, so it would be negative 1. 1 times 7 is 7. And so this complicated fraction here at the, new, at the very beginning turns out to be just a negative 1 over 7. All right, so that's one way to solve these complex fractions. Now, if these had, you know, other things to, in them, such as multiplication, you know, other things that we had to do first, so maybe we had, you know, something like A plus B times C, you know, we would simplify that first, and if it was A minus B times C in the denominator, we'd simplify that, and then at the end, we still do this, you know, multi multiply by the reciprocal basically keep your first one change it to multiply and then to the reciprocal and then anything that cancels cancels and we end up with our final result now the other way is to clear fractions of a complex nature so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the numerator and find the lcd for that numerator so you know here if we found the lcd it would be 12 then we would determine the LCD for the denominator. Now in this case, you know, they both are the same. Now it's not always going to be the same way. So it's going to be different many times. And so you find the LCD for the denominator. 
And then so you'll have two numbers now, the LCD for each of those. And what you want to do is find the least common denominator between those two LCDs that you found. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that combined LCD, and that's going to get rid of all fractions. And then after that, we can just simplify and work our way down. All right, so let's, let's do one. And again, they're not always going to have the same LCD1 and LCD2, and this is going to be an example of that. So let's say we have a negative 3 over 2 minus, where would my 2 go? Minus uh 2 over 3 and let's say that's over a negative 7 over 4 minus 2 over 3 okay so if we think about this lcd1 which is the numerator it's going to be just 2 times 3 and that's 6 and lcd2 which is the denominator that's going to be well basically 4 times 3 which is 12 now we need to find the LCD between the 6 and the 12. Well, in this case, the LCD is just going to be 12 because here this, again, is just 2 times 3. This is 4, which is 2 times 2 times 3. And so we're going to use each one the most times. So 2 is used twice here, only once here. So we'll use it twice in our final LCD. And then 3 is used once in both of them, so we'll have basically 4 times 3, which is our 12. So that's going to be our LCD. So that, then, we take times the whole numerator and the whole denominator. So what that's going to look like is we're going to take 12 times negative 3 over 2 minus 2 over 3. And then we're going to take it 12 times negative 7 over 4 minus 2 over 3. And so when we multiply 12 over 12, that's the same thing as 1. So really, we're just multiplying by 1. But now we have to go ahead and distribute. So we'll take that times that, and that times that, that times that, and that times that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to end up with, before we simplify, we'll have 12 times negative 3 over 2, then minus 12 times 2 over 3, all over 12 times negative 7 over 4 minus 12 times 2 over 3. And now we can kind of simplify. And what you notice is all of our denominators are going to disappear here. Disappear. So 2 will go into 12, 6. 3 will go into 12, 4. 4 will go into 12, 3. And 3 will go into 12, 4. So now what we have is 6 times negative 3. Then minus 4 times 2 over, now here we have 3 times negative 7 minus 4 times 2. And now we just multiply. So that's going to be minus 18 minus 8 over, here we have a minus 21 minus 8. And so we have here a minus 26 over a minus 29. And the only thing that happens is we have a negative divided by a negative, and so that gives us a positive 26 over 29, and that's going to be our final answer. And so this is a method to basically clearing all of the fractions. And so we had, again, first get our LCD1 for the numerator, get our LCD2 for the denominator, and then find the LCD of those two numbers. In this case, it was 12. And then we multiply the numerator by 12, the denominator by 12, and then we just simplify as we go down until we get our final answer there. Okay. All right, so that's how we do that. And again, all these, I'll, I'll go and do more examples in, in short videos. Uh, so if you want to go look at a different example, you can see it in a little bit. So the next thing is applications of this. And the first application we're going to have is a trapezoid. So it's a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel opposite sides. And these are usually the bases. And then the distance between the bases is the height of the trapezoid, or also called uh, the altitude. So what does a trapezoid actually look like? Well, if we draw our bases, say we have one longer and one shorter, then this would be what a trapezoid looks like. And usually we put the bottom one we call base one, 
top one we call base two. And then from the top to the bottom, that's our height or our altitude, depending on how you want to look at it, but it's usually labeled as H. So we have our base one, our base two, those are the parallel sides. We have our height, and then we have a formula. The area is equal to one half of the height times base one plus base two. And so that's going to be the formula for uh, getting the area of the trapezoid. Now, why does that work? Well, it kind of works because of of triangles. So let's draw this again. So if we have that and then over and then that and doesn't look as good as the first one, but that's okay. So now let's break this down here. Okay, so we still have base one, we still have base two, you know, we have our height. So how does the height work? Well, this triangle, if we think about it, is there. And this triangle, because it comes over, we're going to actually have to come over and then down. That would be our height there. So what we have is we have two areas. We have, say, this is area one. This is area two. So we can say area one is equal to one half base one times the height. Area two is equal to one half base two times the height. Now, if we add those two together, that's the whole area of the trapezoid, which is everything under there. And so the total area is equal to, well, we have one half base one height plus one half base two height. Now we kind of have to factor. Well, we have a half here and we have a half here. We have a height here, and we have a height here. So if we pull out one half of the height, what's left? Well, we have base one plus base two. And hence, we have our formula for the trapezoid from that. And so that's how we're getting this formula. And it's just by adding two triangles together and then factoring out one half height. And then we just have our two bases. Okay, so that's how we're gonna find it. And so now let's, let's do an example. Let's say uh, we have Maybe it's best to draw the lines like this first. Maybe not, still looks kind of bad. But let's say this one up here is two and three quarters feet. And this one's maybe four and one half feet. And let's say our height is three feet, okay? So what is the area of this trapezoid? Well, it's gonna be equal to one half the height, so times three, times base one, which is four and one half, plus base two, which is two and three quarters. And now we just use PEMDAS. Well, PEMDAS says we do what's in parentheses first, so we're gonna do that first. So how do we wanna do that? Well, we can do that several ways. We've, we've learned a couple ways to do that. We could do four and one half plus two and three quarters. And so add those together. Well, that's going to have to get an LCD there of two over two. Multiply here to get the four. So that's going to be four and two fourths plus two and three fourths. So four plus two is six. Two plus three is five over four. Well, five over four is one and one quarter. So if we take six plus one and one quarter, that's going to give us seven and one quarter. Okay. Now we could have also changed it to improper fractions and done it that way. But either case, what we're going to end up having to do because now we're multiplying is that's one half times three times. Now to multiply, we have to have the improper fractions. So now we have to take four times seven is 28 plus one is 29. So it's going to be 29 over four. Okay. So now we've got this product to take. So if we think about that, that's three. That's really just three over one. So we have one times three times 29. Well, 29 times three, that's gonna give us 27. That's two times three is six plus two is eight. And then on the denominator, we have two times one is two times four is eight. 
And so that's going to be our denominator. Now, if we want, we could say, well, our area is equal to 87 over 8 feet squared. Or if we needed to have it into a mixed number, we could take 8 into 87. That's going to go in once. That's 8. Subtract. That's 0. Bring down our 7. That doesn't go in. Or it's going to be 10 and 7 eighths feet squared. So depending on if they allow you to have the um, improper fraction or improper fraction or if you have to have that um, mixed number. Kind of depends on which one they want you to have would be the, which one you do there. So again, probably on this one you would have to do the mixed number because you start out with them and so usually they want you to end with them. So that's uh, what I would do. All right, so that concludes 4.7.